How's it going folks, it's Rob here and in today's video we're going to be chatting about a couple of commonly asked questions or themes that I see pop up not only in my own comment section but also over on different Facebook aquaponics groups. Now the first one is something I don't know where it started but I re do remember seeing it um, when I first started getting into aquaponics and that is you can grow all the food you need in your system to um, give to your fish who are feeding at the moment and that will provide them all the nutrients they need to grow. So while you can grow duckweed and azolla in your aquaponic system to feed to the fish, uh, there's a little bit of an issue with the nutrients, um, overall nutrient level in the system. I suppose the best way to explain it is, well, if you're growing um, using some nutrients that has come from the fish to put into the duckweed, and then popped back into the fish, basically they're recycling nutrients within that loop. Now the problem occurs when those fish start to grow and metabolizing some of those elements from the duckweed into their own body. Not only that, you're growing vegetables. Uh, you harvest a veggie, you then eat the veggie, those nutrients are not in the system anymore. So basically you're ending up with a nutrient defici deficiency within the system. Now I'm not against um, feeding your fish alternate fish feeds like azolla or duckweed, I think it's fantastic. We've even thrown in some um, lettuce greens and other greens from the system that we've grown in there into the fish just to give them a bit of a variation on the diet. Uh, but the best way to go about it is to grow your azolla and your duckweed in little ponds or tubs outside the system using nutrients from outside they then grow you pop that in the system the duck uh, the ducks the fish then smash them or you could use ducks if you want to do quack ponics uh, the fish then smash through that uh, assimilate the nutrients excrete the waste and then it goes on to the plant so that is a completely viable way to do it. When I set up our duckweed and azolla tubs, what I used was water from the aquaponic system because I knew it would be nutrient rich. And then basically a little bit of compost every now and then just to sit in the bottom. And that provided enough elements to be dissolved in the water for the plants to take up. That's one method you could use. Uh, other things you could do is actually grow a specific garden maybe if you're interested in getting some more external nutrients in. Things like purslane, very high in omega-3. Um, we've even grown it for ourselves to eat. You can get a commercial variety which I think is called golden purslane. Uh, very large leaves on them. We actually get it growing, the smaller variety growing as a weed here. And I have ripped off um, bits and thrown it in the system for the fish before. And yeah, they seem to, um, once they work out that it's food, uh, they seem to hoe through it fairly quickly. I've thrown uh, moringa leaves in with some previous jade perch and they ate them. Now there are other options as well, uh, things you can grow at home or raise at home that you can feed them to bring some external nutrients in and cut the food bill. Uh, that's things like black soldier fly larvae, some fish will take to them straight away. Our original jade perch would eat them and then spit them out for us to collect on the base of the tank. But I have heard of some people that will freeze them, then chop them into sections more like a pellet size, throw that in for the fish, and they tend to um, yeah, hook into them straight away. And after a while, they actually weeden them on to the um, whole black soldier fly larvae. Keep in mind, that's the jade perch. They seem to be a little bit particular about them for whatever reason. Uh, other species, I've heard um, tilapia will hit them straight away and also things like catfish and carp as well. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. I'm just worried about getting splashed here again. Um, so that's the black soldier fly larvae. Other composters, things like compost worms, they can be tossed into the tank. We've thrown compost worms in before and um, the, both the silver perch and the jade perch smash through them fairly well. Things like mealworms. Mealworms are something we've raised primarily for the butcher birds that we feed on the deck at the moment and the magpies. But we've also thrown some in for the fish and they don't tend to last very long in the tank at all. And again, it's a high protein source coming from outside the system, um, giving them, you know, those extra nutrients. And something we've wanted to try but haven't quite uh, got the setup for it is growing crickets. Uh, these guys absolutely love grasshoppers we've collected from around the patch. Uh, but crickets would be an easy way to farm uh, a little insect like that and then have a daily ration that you feed to the aquaponics. Uh, we're just a little bit hesitant because once those little uh, fellas get out, 
uh, they can make a mess. I've been in many a pet stores that are in, uh, infested with crickets uh, because someone's opened up one of the lids for the reptile food. One thing I would recommend though is you look into the diet requirements of the fish either through university sites or maybe um, aquaculture sites and just see what they, they prefer. Do that research first and then you can probably narrow it down to what you can produce at home but by no means are you limited to just the commercial feed. I do think it makes a good backbone though because it is made and formulated to have all the elements that the fish require. Unfortunately not everything for the plants but definitely everything for the fish. I do hope that's helped a few of you folks out there who are curious about um, alternate food sources. A few folks who want to save a bit of coin learning more about aquaponics I thought I'd let you know I do have that aquaponics backyard beginners guide available. It's $9.95 US and it's an online guide. It's extremely interactive. All you have to do is um, press a button, speak into the microphone of your phone and it will give you a list of results that you can then delve in deeper, uh, learning about different topics about you know what is aquaponics, some of the basic um, bits and pieces you need to know to run a system like cycling it, how to make different components, how to build the chop and flip system, all that information is in there so I will pop a link down in the description and also one up here uh, so you can go over to our website and learn more about it um, so you can see if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in and just a heads up it is in a number of languages it's in Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi and also Chinese as well yeah check it out and thank you very much to everyone who has bought it um, I really am loving the reviews and getting to help you folks out when you jump on over to the guide and ask me questions so the next thing I wanted to talk about is basically is aquaponics right for you if um, you, you're not into it yet and you're thinking about having a crack uh, well I think it's an absolute awesome way to grow not only fish for the table and be a little bit more self-sufficient and self-reliant and also you know the side dish of um, veggies that comes from the filters doesn't go down too bad either. It does take a little bit of time uh, to run you know just like the normal veggie patch or hydroponic system uh, and it does involve a fair amount of money in infrastructure to get you going um, even if you manage to buy um, recycled IBCs and drums like we use here it can be rather expensive just to give you an idea we'll just move the camera around a bit uh, that tank there if I was to buy that brand new I think it was around about eight or nine hundred dollars Australian at the time uh, I was lucky and picked it up second hand and it cost me a fraction of that and thank you very much Paul I know I got a great deal now I just wanted to touch briefly on the um, the time thing again before we get into um, a bit of a breakdown back of the envelope costing I've done for a basic system time wise it really takes no longer once it's set up and running to tend every week than a normal veggie patch. We don't have to worry about weeding, we don't have to worry about going out and watering every day. Uh, all I pretty much will do here is empty this filter um, into a mineralization tank, feed the fish. I come down here a couple of times a day. If I was working away from home, it would probably take me not even five minutes a day to toss some feed in pick the veg, uh, look for any pest damage or anything like that. Um, that's pretty much all it. Pretty much all the same as a normal soil patch, except I don't have to worry about watering it all through the hot summer days we have here. Uh, on the weekend, I'd probably spend, oh, I don't know, about 30, maybe 40 minutes um, looking at the fish as they're eating, um, cleaning out the filters and whatnot, as I mentioned, and just going around the system and having a little bit more of a thorough go through the plants. Pretty much all the same as nearly everyone I know, myself included, when we have a soil garden that we grow our own food from. So time-wise, not much more demanding. Energy-wise, can be more demanding. Um, obviously, we have pumps running all the time. There's ways to offset that. We have a back-to-grid um, system on the house. People keep telling me to set up this as a solar. We partially already is with the solar panels on the roof. You can run them um, completely off-grid solar or wind turbine if you're in a windy enough area uh, but the, that does ramp up the cost yet again with batteries and uh, inverters and that sort of thing depending on how what pumps you're using and how you've set the system up so that power plus the initial setup can be rather expensive but there's another way to look at it um, I know people who have been growing in this method in the same system for f over five years some of them are closer to ten years and all they basically need to do is buy new seeds, uh, new fingerlings every season because ours don't grow or will reproduce well in the systems and also the commercial feed and they're pretty much all laughing. So no different to anyone else who's buying in horse manure at four or five dollars a bag or buying commercial compost to put in their gardens or um, off the shelf fertilizers in suburbia like ourselves. Um, so it really isn't expensive in that respect, especially considering you're getting a fish that you've grown yourself 
on the barbecue and then on the table. Yes, expensive to begin with, but the benefits do pay off over the years. Unfortunately, I have had a few people say, oh, but I've been told it's really cheap to set one of these systems up. The uh, breakdown that I've got here is for a three bed IBC system, something I'm actually gonna be filming very soon and uh, posting to the channel for you folks who want a gander. So if you want a notification when that happens, hit that subscribe button and jump on over to the bell so you do get notifications. So I've broken this system down into the basic main components. There's a few bits and pieces I've missed, but this will give you a rough idea. I haven't included prices for stands. Um, generally people use things like Besser bricks or cinder blocks, and most people can scrounge some of them around from um, either their own yard or neighbors and friends I found if you're resourceful enough so I haven't included them uh, basic plumbing which is your PVC pipe and any hoses that you're going to use anywhere from around about 200 to 300 dollars very rough figures here the air pump to deliver air into the fish tank you're looking at around about a oh, hundred dollars for a 1,000 litre or 270 um, gallon tote um, a water pump to move the water through the system, $250 to $300. A radial flow settler drum, if it's a recycled one like ours, you're looking around about anywhere from $10 to $25. A fish tank, and if we're using IBCs, also a sump tank and three grow beds, you're looking at roughly around about $375 there. Now the next bit is where it can get expensive or it can be really cheap, clay. If you were to use clay like we did, I've actually knocked the clay price down a little bit. So for a three bed IBC system, you're looking at around about $630 worth of clay. Now I'm really lucky, I got a lot of secondhand clay and also bought when they were around about $25 a bag bulk. Um, but I have seen clay at the moment anywhere up to $48 a bag. Um, so that's pretty much all the most expensive part of the whole system. Now you can make it rather cheaper if you decide to opt for a different rock source. Uh, the cheapest one I could find is blue metal, which is a road base or sometimes sold as a decorative rock. It's made from basalt here in southeast Queensland. And I can get a cubic meter, which is enough to do the three beds, uh, for $100 plus some left over to throw around the ground to make it look decorative if you, you know, you're into that sort of thing. Um, so that is a substantial saving of around about $530. Now on to final costings. I did use a couple of ballpark figures there, but roughly speaking, you're looking around about $1,600 to $1,800 if you were to use clay as the media. If you were to use the basalt, um, you're probably looking around about $1,000 to $1,200 um, just to get the basic system. And that's not including things like um, your seeds or seedlings, your fish, your fish feed, which is an ongoing cost, your testing equipment, and other bits and pieces as well. So for you folks who were told that it is a fairly cheap way to grow your food, I'm very sorry it isn't. It does take a fair bit of capital um, to get you started and up and running. If you do want to save a bit of coin um, setting up your system, there is another option, and that is to scour the Facebook groups, um, Gumtree, um, other social online groups for people who are wanting to sell up their aquaponic systems. Uh, I've just seen a couple come up recently. A lot of people moving around Australia to escape something for some reason at the moment. And I've seen a lot of aquaponic systems come up for sale in Victoria because they don't want to pack them up, move them all the way here to Queensland. Everyone's coming to Queensland and then um, set them up again. So they're offering them very cheap just to get rid of them so it might be an idea just to hop on those social media groups and see what's on offer i've seen complete systems pretty much all the same size as mine go for around about five six hundred dollars which is an absolute steal couldn't even buy the clay in our system for that uh, that amount of money so do keep a look out there you never know what sort of bargain is going to pop up there is another way to go if you're not 100 percent sure if aquaponics is right for you or if you don't have the cash straight out the gate and you're determined to have a system, uh, a small little basic system is what I would suggest. Um, you can buy um, off the shelf um, kits if you're um, not too technically minded and don't have the tools, or you can make your own little DIY ones by buying the components off the shelf or recycled things like the IBCs and plumbing them up yourself. Now, um, a great way to start, I think, is an IBC tote. They're a thousand liters, 270-ish gallons. I've got a video on it, I'll pop it up there, but the basics is you chop the top off it, you flip it over, you use the base as a fish tank, you pump the water up into the grow bed and you grow your food up there. And in a little system like that, you can easily grow 10 to 12 fish that you want to grow out to 500 grams or about a pound with the amount of biofiltration that's in the grow bed itself. 
I'd also um, suggest that you look into things like a little um, a canister filter or a little compact filter just to run on the side, uh, just so you, the grow beds don't get too mucky with fish waste. If you're only going to grow one crop of fish a year though, and you're prepared to clean out the bed after you've harvested them, um, yeah, no filter is required, but that's a whole different video yet again. And if you do go the IBC route, um, it's something that you can add other components on, other IBCs or a traditional fish tank like I've got here and other um, preformed grow beds if you can pick them up cheaply enough. And you can use that original fish tank as a sump tank. Uh, the grow bed on top is another grow bed and then you just plug the other components in. And if you want a couple of ideas on that, I'll pop a video up there and down in the description looking at um, three different ways you can set up basic small backyard aquaponics systems. Just quickly again, for you folks who are new to aquaponics, there is that link to my guide down in the description. That'll take you over to our website and explain a load more on how it works and that sort of thing. But I do hope that this video has helped you folks out who um, have been contemplating the uh, food dilemma. Uh, not only that if aquaponics is even right for you to have a crack at to begin with. And as always, I really do need to thank you folks who do come along week after week helping to support the channel just by watching the videos, thumbing them up and sharing them around with your friends. Always like to say g'day to you down in the comments below. Special thanks also to you folks who have bought the guide and are asking me questions over there. Uh, the folks who are supporting us over on the YouTube membership program and also our Farm Your Own Yard folks. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate the support. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens and aquaponics is booming and I'll catch you later. Happy growing folks. A radial flow settler drum if it's a recycle a recyclable blah.